Hello, this is Yogi Endo. Well, this is the second presentation, but for us, well, this is the first presentation, but for us, this is uh, the second presentation. It's complicated, but anyway. So, uh, let me start talking about uh, the presentation of the pushover analysis applied to the Pagoda Tempo. Uh, what we are going to speak about, let's see, coming. Uh, basically, we applied push of adaptive, you know, this new you know, push of analysis technique to follow the tempo, this render historical structure. And of course, it's not at all. We also uh, performed some experiments, which also I'm going to speak. So, uh, please enjoy my presentation. And if you have any questions, later we know that we have the live discussion moment. So, please ask me anything there. Okay. So what this presentation speak the paper speaks about. I, like I said, I applied nonlinear static analysis where pushover analysis to pagoda type structure. And when we apply the pushover analysis not only for, for the pagoda type, basically we have a, the, the problems. Well we always have problems. Uh, for the pagoda type structures, the first problem is the, the, the these timber elements. They, there are many, many timber elements inside of the powders and we don't know exactly how they contribute to the behavior of the entire structure, the first problem. Second problem, when we apply the push of analysis right here, we often use this kind of the mass proportional uh, distribution pattern or this type of the fast mode distribution pattern. And they really have the influence of the result, which is better, you know, we all often discuss this kind of things. So, uh, noticing these problems, we tackled two tasks in this paper. First, we studied the shear behavior between these team environments and mainly war. Second, we applied push-off analysis to this pagoda using different uh, load distribution pattern. This also includes adaptive push analysis. Uh, yeah, yeah we applied this kind of a diameter shear test. It's very similar to the direct shutters specified by the Eurocode. We just uh, swap the center with timber block. And the second push of analysis. Yes, this is the structure. And we use it by this uh, the push of analysis. We studied influence of the interface behavior also. So there are two things. First, we did this you know, direct shear test. And we got some idea about interface behavior. Using taking advantage of this results, we applied push of analysis, analysis with different load pattern. Not only the push of analysis studied different load patterns, but they also we also studied influence of this interface behavior to the entire structure. Okay, so this is the pagoda. Well, it's uh, it's uh, one of the tallest pagodas. Well, pagoda is a Hinduism temple in in Nepal. Uh, the one of the tallest temple, Pagoda Temple in Nepal. It's called the Kumbhershwa Temple. It's located in Pago, uh, Patan. And it was built in the, the 17th century and it was seriously damaged by the 2015 Gorka earthquake. What happened here, you see? It used to be five tiers Pagoda, yay! And it got an earthquake. And uh, because of the aftershock of the earthquake, the top tier was collapsed. And currently, it's post, uh, four tier pagoda. Of course, uh, later they will be you know, restored. Maybe by now it's restored. I don't know, maybe because like, we cannot travel. No, no, nobody can travel these days. So. And uh, this is a four tier pagoda. Okay, so what kind of analysis we applied? Uh, we did three, three analysis. One is push up analysis, but without changing the force pattern. And the other is push up analysis, you know, adaptive, changing the force pattern. And we uh, compared this result with nonlinear dynamic analysis. And uh, what, what did we compare? First, uh, the horizontal base acceleration, displacement, and damage pattern. And for the IPA, let's say it's called IPA, we, uh, we studied two load patterns, like I showed before. One is mass proportional, um, MIPA. The other is fundamental model shape, uh, load pattern, phi IPA. Okay, uh, this, this, you know, Characters, this world, you know, appears so many times, so please remember IPA, APA, MBA, MBA, five IPA. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, for the IP, APA adaptive push of analysis, we use uh, this uh, the, the method proposed in this paper. 
Yeah, please find this paper yeah, from my paper. Okay, and uh, what they do is they basically ask, uh, uh, they ask us to update a uh, load uh, periodically. In this case, in our study, we use a state updated every 35 kilonewton. Well, this is often enough. This is often enough. And uh, we, 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 of course, you can update it every step, but it's really time consuming, so it's like uh, every few steps. Well, in the in, in, in software, in the program, but it doesn't matter. It is 35 kN. So every 35 kN, uh, we uh, run the agent value analysis, and of course, agent value analysis show you the fundamental mode of the structure. And the fundamental mode is changing because of the progress of the damage. So we include the state of the damage, progress of the damage, by changing with the load pattern. So this is the APA we took advantage of, and uh, the, this is basically the, 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 the equation. But uh, what I did here is basically, you know, we just uh, play, uh, like I said, you know, we, we took advantage of the uh, the damage of the structure by running agent value analysis and checking the first mode shape. Okay, and uh, let's start uh, to what we did exactly. So first we did experiment. And uh, I said I did the tri uh, triplet shear test. Uh, but before uh, to start the triplet shear test, we check uh, the, 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 the strength of the components, I mean brick, earthen mortar, and the timber. And uh, we took advantage of Japanese standard, ISO standard, and Europos. Uh, again, please, please refer to my paper. And we identified the compressive strength, flexural strength, and the modulus elasticity. And they all are kind of reasonable for this material. And uh, not only the strengths, for the earth and mortar, we know that they differ from, you know, uh, each case. You know, they are natural materials, so they are very different from each other. Uh, so we also studied the grain size using hydrometer method. And that identified some silt clay proportion 26, 25, 21. And uh, this value, we know that this value is a very good actually. It's like, actually it's very close to uh, the law fine in Nepal as a construction material. Oh, I forgot to mention the timber uh, we are using is here. It's called the salt timber. It's also a very typical uh, construction material in Nepal. So we try to represent the situation in Nepal. And for the brick, we use a kind of handmade solid brick. It's also very similar to the, uh, the historical bricks in Nepal. So we try to uh, recreate, the reproduce the situation, the state of Nepal historical structures. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. And we carry out, uh, carry out this you know, uh, direct shear test, and we are changing uh, the pre-compression stress as euro code specified. And we get this kind of the beautiful, beautiful strain line. We are very happy, of course. I know you all are happy. And uh, extending this line, you can see that the cohesion is almost there. Uh, somewhere uh, there. Uh, cohesion is almost there. And the friction angle is 0 0.325. And uh, these values are uh, okay. Uh, you know, we, we, we know that the similar kind of material uh, do. So we saw this kind of uh, for the triangle and the cohesion. And uh, taking advantage of this, uh, this, this result, we uh, prepared the, the, the solid element model and uh, we used half structure because you know, they are symmetrical, uh, they are uh, uh, plan in, in plan, they are symmetrical. And uh, of course, we applied the nonlinear analysis, so we used the semi abstract approach, drug approach in, ten uh, in compression, and ranking in tension. And for union shear, you know, tensile tension behavior, we apply linear tension behavior. And this is please remember that we apply, we apply uh, the two types of the measurement strengths, taking into account the damage state of the structure and also the construction history. I didn't mention in too detail, but the powder first it used to be a two-tier powder, and after two or three centuries, they added three uh, three tier. So they are totally different age, and apparently, you know, the, the lower tiers, they, you know, went through uh, enough uh, sufficient uh, maintenance 
but dark power peers, where actually we had access to the inside of the structure, they are kind of left uh, as it is. So we thought uh, that uh, we could, it, it's reasonable to change the strength, lower tiers and other tiers, and type R, reasonable strength memory, are applied to ground and the first tier. And the rest of the three tiers, we apply type L, uh, half the body. And uh, now here comes the interface behavior. And the interface behavior is applied to, uh, to which gives uh, to the, these pin elements giving connection to the inner wall and exterior wall. And uh, in reality, it looks like this. Oh, then another thing I have to mention uh, why we, you know, did the direct shear test, you know, because you basically. If you think that usually this kind of the team environment, they have signed a kind of peg or something to fix the connection, you know, between the timber and between the timber and the wall. But we got inside, and because of the you know, insufficient maintenance, yes, they are doing this, uh, maintenance, I said, but it's not sufficient. So often the pegs were lost, or they are really, you know, uh, damaged due to damp, that sort of thing. So we saw. Uh, it's possible to, 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 to assume, to think, the, the, the timber element you know, you know, only relies on the you know, frictional behavior to connect each other. So this is our uh, the, the idea. And that's why we apply the con conflection model between the timber element and the wall. And the values, we took advantage of the experimental results. Yeah. And when we apply this uh, the push-off analysis, uh, there are six cases. First, MIPA mass push-off analysis. And one, are rigid model. Rigid model means uh, they are rigidly connected between the environment and metal. And FI model, flexor interface model, they have the interface behavior, which I mentioned earlier. And phi, IPA, it, of course, it's the same. A fast model, fast model. And adaptive. And the nominee generator. So we compare these six analyses. And uh, of course, in the rigid model, uh, you see extended damage, of course, because they are rigid, so they are more ductile, they can you know, more, they had uh, more deformation capacity. And the frictional model, because of the, 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 the fragile frictional connection, they stopped, uh, or they didn't uh, allow the structure to develop the extensive damage. And uh, we all know that rigid connection apparently overestimating the capacity. So let's just compare. And it's the same. I just picked up the, the, the frictional interface model. Just you know, compare the frictional interface model. Uh, mass, fast mode, adaptive, nonlinear dynamic analysis. And we see uh, here uh, this is the uh, uh, ground tier. No, this is the first tier. And this is the top tier. And uh, when we see uh, the first, when we see the, the, the uh, acceleration and the displacement, apparently this adaptive push of analysis is doing much better, showing closer value in terms of the, the maximum acceleration and the displacement uh, compared to do the you know, IPA mode. So the first this is okay. And when we compare the damage, yeah, apparently, Adaptive push of analysis showing much closer damage pattern to the nonlinear dynamic analysis. So we, we could say, well, of course, it's not perfect, and we are still doing, we are still improving the adaptive push of analysis which we are applying. But apparently, at this stage, it, it's fair to say adaptive push of analysis is doing much better than IPA, IPA analysis you know, by comparing the result with nonlinear dynamic analysis. Yes, see? So this is what we got. So let me say the conclusion. And the first light shot showed reasonable frictional angle and nearly zero cohesion. And uh, this friction applying this frictional behavior, it we could avoid the overestimation of the capacity and the behavior of the power. And the, the last one is important, adaptive push analysis provided result in a closer to nonlinear dynamic analysis. And uh, ongoing work. Yes, one of the things uh, I, I tried to avoid mentioning, yes, this, the, the result we showed in this paper did not show the damage pattern like the real structure. In the real structure, we saw the collapse of the top tier. It didn't appear 
even in the nonlinear dynamic analysis. So apparently we have the problem. Yeah, of course we have the problem in the analysis, but we have the problem in the in the model. Uh, what we are doing? One, uh, we still we are not happy with the direct shear test because it's really small. So we are constructing larger, more realistic scale specimens and doing the pull-out test to see uh, the frictional behavior into detail. And another thing, adaptive to shower, we are we are testing different uh, uh, updating method, different initial load pattern, and applying that to the different pagodas. Also, we are applying into method. So uh, we are still you know trying to improve adaptive pushover analysis as well. Also, in understanding of the behavior, uh, frictional behavior of the powder type structure. So this this is kind of the ongoing work, but we thought this is a great opportunity to share the progress of my work with you. Thank you very much.